Hey guys, it's Dr. Sonia. Today, we're going to do a little lesson for my horse club, my 4-H horse club. We have not been able to do horse club because of all the COVID rules and no getting together and our um, place where we normally meet is closed at our 4-H office in our arena. So we're going to do a little um, online demo. And I'm sorry about the shadows. It's just the way the sun is shining. But we're going to use trouble here and this is going to be basic but you always can learn something new that's um something about you can always be educated your whole life i've been um owning horses for 30 plus years and i've been a veterinarian for 20 plus years and i met with a colleague at a um a chiropractor class an animal chiropractic class um a couple weeks ago and i learned a new way to tie up a horse and I've been tying up horses for 30 plus years. So you can always learn. Um, so even if this is basic for you, it's, it's still informative and you may pick up something that you didn't know before. Now, this is Trouble and she is a five-year-old quarter horse, filly mare, I guess she's a mare now. So a filly is a young female horse. That's usually four years or under. So, um, and a colt is a boy horse. Um, a gelding has been neutered or castrated. We call neutering castration in horses. Um, so I wanted to talk, she's fussing because the flies are biting her. So I wanted to talk to you today about um, some basic horse things, okay? This is a halter. And a lot of people who aren't super familiar with horses will mix up a halter and a bridle. And I'm gonna tell you the difference between those, okay? This is a halter and a halter is what we use just to, it's the, least form of restraint in a horse. So I'm holding her, but if she wanted to, she's 900 pounds and I'm not 900 pounds. So she could walk off and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, so she's had to be trained for this, okay? Um, but she knows that this is how I use, um, what we use as a control measure and this is her restraint. And it's, like I say, it's a very minimal restraint, but it's a restraint device because she can't just walk off because I'm holding her. Um, you gotta watch your feet. Okay, now, something I'm doing is I'm standing on her left side. So I'm standing here, here's my right hand, here's my left hand, okay? So in horses, we do most everything on their left side. Horses tend to be left-sided. So owner, um, people, most people are right-handed, but some people are left-handed. Well, horse world, most horses are left-sided and there are a few that are right. That's why if you ever watch a racetrack or something, it curves to the left because horses are left-sided. They like to go left. They like their left side. It's just their more natural um, way of going is to the left. So that's why we kind of tend to use their left side. Um, so when I stand here, I'm gonna stand on her left side. Okay, and I wanna to stand to her side because she can see me here. If we get right in front of her, she can't see that because her eyes are on the sides of her head and she's looking this way. And that's why she picks her head up and looks around so she can see in front of her and behind her because um, the way her eyes are positioned, she can't see four feet directly in front of her or directly behind her. Okay, and that's why you never wanna walk directly behind a horse without allowing, letting them know you're there because if you startle them, they'll kick you because they can't see you. Um, and they just know something's behind them. Okay, so this is a halter. Now, there are different types of halters, all right? This is a rope halter and it's tied. So this is the, the lead rope, okay? It's not a leash, it's a lead rope. And the lead rope is tied to the halter, okay? And this should probably be in another little knot, but it's not and that's okay. And this is a tie. So there are no buckles on this halter. So there's nothing to break. Okay, and it has these little knots right here, and it has little knots up here, and those are acupressure points for a horse. So when I fuss at her like this, this hits an acupressure spot and lets her know that I'm serious. Okay, so this has more control than this type of halter. You like it? She likes it. So this is what I grew up with. Um, not, rope halters have just recently become well, I'll say recently, you have to remember my age. Um, she's gonna go eat something. So this is a standard nylon web halter. These come in leather. Okay, a lot of the um, English 
horse world likes these in leather. Um, they have a lot of buckles. So you see the difference? They have buckles, buckles, buckles. And in order to put a lead rope on here, I would have to have another snap to snap onto here and lead her around with this. Now, the reason that we've kind of gotten away from these is these buckles can break, right? Whereas the rope halter, nothing can break. Um, this is adjustable, so I can adjust the nose band and I can adjust the, um, the pole, the part that goes over the pole, okay? Um, but like I say, we use these. Um, they're not as much control because they're flat and there's buckles that can break and so we don't use these quite as much. Um, although we do use them. Um, I just like a rope halter because you don't have to look for a lead rope. The lead rope's always attached. It's like your dog having a collar on and you're looking for a leash because they snap and unsnap. This always has it on here. Now, the difference between that one and this one is that one I can leave on, which I don't like to do because you saw those places they can get hung up. So if they get hung in a tree or hung in a fence or hung on a stall hook, they can hang places in their halter. So I don't leave halters on horses ever. Um, so I can just, I'm gonna show you, this is a knot. Don't leave me. Okay, so I can take it off like this and she's very wild. She just wants to eat grass. Come here. And then I can put it back on her, back up. And then I'm gonna put it over her pole through this knot. And then I don't want this poking her in the face. So when I make my loop, I'm gonna go through to her eye and then back to her tail. So this loop is back here. This tail is back here. And I wanna make sure I don't tie it too high because I can tie it way up here and then it's in her eyeballs and that's not doing me any good. So I want it right on the bridge of her nose, but not too low because that gets soft right there and we don't want it to be making, uh, making her uncomfortable. Okay, and then I have my lead rope. All right, now, the difference between a halter with a lead rope, and I'm gonna tie her up for a second. But let me pause it so you don't have to um, watch me do that. Okay, she's over there, so she'll stand there for a minute. Now, this is a bridle. These are two different bridles. Okay, and the difference between a halter and a bridle is a halter is just for restraint. So it has one lead rope with the face piece that we're gonna hold or tie. So she's tied, you can see her. She's tied right there, okay, by the trailer. And a bridle, we don't tie with a bridle. A bridle is what has the bit on it, okay, which goes in their mouth. And it also has reins. So we no longer have a leash or a lead rope. Now we have reins. Okay, and reins are what we use to ride with. Okay, so these are barrel racer reins or rope and reins. It's a single rein. And you can also have split reins, which are two reins. This is the, the actual bridle. Okay, so it's the headpiece. It goes on like this. Okay, and then this is going to go in the mouth. Now, this one has something called a bit guard on it. And these, get up here where you can see them, do this so that when the bit is in her mouth, these little pieces that roll can't pinch her on the sides of her mouth. So we wanna make sure she's comfortable. The bit is, oh, there are broken bits and there are straight bits. Um, I like a broken bit because it makes them a lot softer. So for what we do, we want soft horses. Um, some people want them to be stiff. So it just depends on what you're doing as to what your bit's gonna look like. But the difference is the bridle is gonna have some sort of bit or this has a nose band on it. It's gonna have some sort of riding tool. And then it's gonna have, instead of one coming from here, it's gonna have two places for the reins, okay? So that we have two sides because we're controlling, right? And our bit has two sides. So we wanna be able to control the horse one side for the other side. Okay, so, oh, let me tell you what else it has. It has a curb chain and this holds the bit underneath the chin. Okay, so that's a curb chain. Now, this is a different, same thing, okay? But it's another bridle. It's just different. This one's brown. 
Okay, it has a little bit of a different bit on it. There's no nose band. There's actually no um, curb chain on this because we probably stole it for another bit. And then here's some reins, okay? So bridle with reins, two different reins, halter with one lead rope. Now I wanna show you some, let me pause it and I'm gonna go get her again. Okay, so I wanna show you some grooming that we do. She's a baby, she has fun things to do. Now, this is something that we don't use a ton of anymore. When I was a young girl, we used this all the time because it was kind of the only thing, but now we have tons of different things. But this is a metal curry comb, okay? And it's sharp, do you see that? It has these sharp blades on, it's not sharp to, um, touch but if you rub across a knee or a leg with it it's going to hurt so this is only for soft spots okay muscular spots so dirty this is for dirty horse so i can you see you can see the dust coming off of her i think um so i'm going to use this when she's dirty 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 okay and just because it's circular you don't have to do this but you can okay you see the dust coming up off of her i don't know if you can see that or not but she's dirty so I can take it and I can scrub her with it a little bit. And they make little rubber ones. We have about a hundred different brushes, but a curry comb has these rings in it. So they make a little hand rubber curry that you can massage them kind of with, those are nice. So after you get the big dirt off and you never curry below the knee, okay? So I used to have a little Sam when I was young. It was curry softly, curry please, but never curry below the knees. Because once you hit a knee, that's going to get very um, ouchy. Okay, you see how that pops out and these are sharp. So you want to stay with your curry comb up on these flat um, muscular parts like this. And bellies are good. You can curry bellies. Those are always nice. Okay, then I'm going to leave it like this because my video light is better. Then we have just a soft brush. Okay, so after you get the big dirt off, then we're just going to get the little dirt off. And this you can go all the way down the leg with because we're not gonna hurt anything there. Okay, you see this little piece right here that's called a chestnut. Okay, so we're gonna brush her good with this. Now, have one more that's important. And that is, and never kneel beside your horse, it's not a good thing. Um, this is just a hairbrush, okay? And you can use any kind of hairbrush to do this. Um, I'm gonna brush her mane and I'm gonna brush her tail. So tails for horses are very important. Um, let's talk about tails for a second. Tails for, <laughs> quit, 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 you beat my computer. Tails for horses are used to swat flies. And so we have to be careful. A lot of people will braid tails and that's okay to keep them clean. But at the same time, you have to think you've made a giant bat. Okay, if you've ever been hit with a braided horse tail, it hurts. So you can actually bruise. So if they take this tail and it's braided and it's heavy and they swat themselves with it constantly, then they can actually bruise their whole back end from swatting with a big bat tail. So you, she likes the computer. So you don't, you don't wanna uh, do that. Okay, so like I said, you can braid it, but keep it loose and make sure you keep it brushed out. Then I'm gonna brush her mane. So her mane is on her right side. So you see it over there. So we're gonna brush all that out and we'll do that. I'll get on her other side and do that. It's not that you can't go on the right side. It's just that they're used to being handled from the left side. So we usually saddle from the left side. We'll pick feet from the left side. So let me show you that. I don't know if I have a hoof pick with me. There's one over there, but I won't go get it. So I'm gonna pick up her foot. Let me go. I'm gonna ask her to give me her foot. Look, she just wants to eat grass. Give me your foot. Okay, so we're gonna pick up a foot and we're gonna clean this foot out because we wanna make sure there are no rocks in there. We wanna make sure her feet are nice and clean. Sometimes they'll even um, do crazy things like step on a nail, okay? And we don't ever want our horse to, um, have an ouchy foot because that's what carries us, okay? So if our horse doesn't have good feet, then we don't have a horse because not only do they have to carry them, they have to carry us. So I think that's it for today. So we went over halter, lead rope, 
bridle, bit, reins, okay, chestnut. Look, you can see that chestnut. That's just a little, what they think maybe was a, a thumb at some point. Um, nobody really knows what it's for. It doesn't really do anything. It's just there and it's normal. Um, come here, come here, come here. And you should never be down like this because if something spooked her, she would run over me and that's not safe. So, but anyway, um, I'm fixing to get up. She's a sweet girl. Um, I'll show you her teeth real quick. You wanna see? She still has a baby tooth. Can you still see her baby tooth? No, oh, actually that's her big girl tooth. Coming in, her baby tooth is gone. Let me see. Yep. And don't do that, don't get under yours. Don't try this at home. All right, so I hope y'all learned something today. I will see y'all next time.